blessings to us. You know what I read in the Bible? I read this. He never slumbers nor sleeps. So there ain't no use of both of us staying up all night. I'm gonna go to bed and let God take care of it. Say amen right there because you can't do it. I can't do it. But thank God he can do it and he's worth waiting on because he listens to us. Now, my friend, there's nothing too small or nothing too great for the Lord. I've heard people say, I don't want to trouble the Lord. You can't trouble him. The only way you can trouble him is not live right. Say amen. Amen. Right there, that bothers. He don't like that, but he'll forgive you that right there too. Not only has he located us, not only has he listened to us, but I'm glad he loosed us. As the preacher has already referred to, loosed us from the Adamic nature of sin. This flesh, there's nothing good in the flesh. We're all made of dirt, but thank God, one day this flesh shall be resurrected and get a brand new body. It'll be just like Adam's was in the Garden of Eden, I believe. Why do you say that, preacher? It's because God made him in his likeness. He made him in his image. And then he breathed into him his own breath. He was a little God, if you'll have it, in a perfect place. Bless God, somebody was talking the other day and said they heard the preacher say this, that God made man from corrupt ground. Can I tell you, there ain't nothing God makes corrupt and God don't use corrupt to make it. Here's why. Because God said everything I have made, I called it good. I'll tell you who's corrupted it. The Bible says you and I have corrupted the things that God has made. I'm glad he loosed me. I'm being set free. I'm free from the guilt of tomorrow. Aren't you glad of that? My sins are gone too, by the way. <laughs> Amen. They, met, they were many, but now they're none. Thank God. Why? Because I just had a bloodbath. Amen. I'm glad he washes away my sin. He continually washes. You've heard me tell the story, but I see new folks here tonight that I've never seen before that I can recollect. Uh, I always use this analogy. When I was growing up as a little boy, you remember we had that black and white television. And it snowed on there in July. (laughs) Yeah, it sure did. And we'd have to go up, turn the antenna just right and and things. But they had a jingle. They had a commercial. And the jingle, it was on washing powders, new blue cheer. I mean, anybody ever remember that? Uh, Some of you ain't got a clue what I'm talking about. If it ain't a little cube that goes in an automatic washer, you'd go down dirty because you don't know how to wash clothes. Amen. Right there. Uh, So here's how they had a little lady on there. Uh, They had two wash tubs. Uh, One had the detergent in it, the new blue cheer. The other was just what my mama would say, ranch water. Uh, Amen. That's clear water right there. Uh, So the woman had the little the washboard and she'd take that garment and she'd put it in that new blue cheer and she'd sing washy, washy, washy in the new blue cheer. Rinchy, rinchy, rinchy in the water so clear and hanging on the line and she'd go back get another garment and she'd do the same thing but after a while she'd grab a hold of a garment and she'd washy, washy, washy in the new blue cheer. Rinchy, rinchy, rinchy in the water so clear. Washy, washy, washy in the... Yes, sir. Uh, What are you saying, preacher? Uh, Sometimes, bless God, uh, we need a good washing. Say amen Amen. right there. Maybe even a little more than a washing. Uh, There's been times, bless God, I needed a good scrub bath. Say amen right there. And I'm glad he don't give up on us. I'm glad he keeps us. I'm glad he washes us. I'm glad he'll take us one day and make us just like him. Somebody give him praise. While I get a drink of water. Amen. Where am I at? Not not only did he loose us, he lifted us. Brought me up out of that horrible pit. Man, I I tell you, that stuff right there will get you in trouble. That horrible pit will get you in trouble. It's destroying our nation. It's destroying our people. It's destroying families. I'm talking good godly families. And I'm not just talking young people. I'm talking middle-aged and even elderly people now are dibble-dabbling in the things of the world. A a, a friend of mine, we were talking, we were in Gallipolis, Ohio a few weeks ago, and this young man, he, well, he's not a, he's, 
I guess he's young. He's younger than us, so that's young, ain't it? Anything under 40 anymore is a kid to me. <laughs> Some of y'all think I'm a kid, so you must be old. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen right there. And he, he, had spent, he, he is what they call a drug addict that can handle the drugs. I said, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard about. But he works a job, a good job, a six-figure-a-year job, and is addicted to heroin, has spent over $100,000. You think of that right there. Huh? You, you think of that. I, I mean, has anything you'd want in the American world, new car, new house, all these things, but something controls him instead of him controlling something. It's destroying our people. In, in Scioto County, Ohio, they just got, they came on the television that there is a new drug, new type of heroin that's been laced with some other time, uh, some kind of uh, uh, opium they call it. I, I can't remember the name, but if you take that, it'll kill you instantly. And in six days, they've had an overdose every day of a person and they died. Can I tell you, they died. That stuff will kill you. It's killing our people. And the law, I'm not sure the law enforcement even worries about it anymore. I'm not sure they may, ain't, half of them ain't even hooked into it. They, you can get mad at me if you want to, but I'm telling you, if we get serious with God, it's killing people everywhere. People you wouldn't even think of. But see, I'm glad one thing he can do, he can lift you out of that stuff. Huh? He can bring you out of that stuff. You say, they say, oh no, preacher, I'm telling you, if you trust God fully, he can deliver you. And anyone else. It gets back to that, what I said, people do what they want to. It's tough, it ain't easy. But I'm telling you, you do what you want. Notice this, he loved us. Aren't you glad he loved us? Amen. And before you go out of here thinking anything wrong of Preacher Mike, I love them folk too. I love them folks that are deceived by Satan, living what they call an alternative lifestyle and all of these things. Listen, I love them people, but it's still wrong. It's still sin. But can I tell you, Jesus died for those folks just as much as he did us or anyone else, the Bible said all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You and I may label things worse than others, but God sees it all on an even keel. But I'm glad, thank God, he loved us. My favorite verse, I, I'm just gonna say this. My favorite verse in the scriptures is Romans 5, 8. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Now I take that personally. Because <laughs> see, I can't answer for nobody but me. And so when I look at that verse, I look at it like this. I know it's universal for everyone, but I look at it personal. But God commended his love towards me. When I was yet a sinner, when I did not love him, when I did not serve him, when I did not respect him, when I did not do what he said, he still loved me. Amen. And you know what's truth? You know what's truth tonight? There won't be one human being that dies lost and go to hell.